Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Finding Love podcast. I am Nancy Bruce, and this is a podcast about finding love and connection and romance in the middle of life. And I'm really excited about my guest today, a very good friend of mine. Her name is Jenny Banks. She lives in Chicago. And Jenny and I have known each other for years. And Jenny is 59. I just turned 60, Jenny. I just turned 60. Yeah. Yeah. Very recently. You know that. Um, You're 59 and you are dating. You're out there dating in the middle of life. And you had some questions uh, that you wanted to talk about with me about just about getting back out there and and what it's what it's like in the in this in this middle of life in this third act. I'm starting to call this third act dating. Love in your third act. Do you like that? Yeah, I do. I do. I've actually been using it for my career because I've had two careers and I just uh was talking to a possible coach. I said, you know, it's my, my third act in my professional life. So I'm very into this third act part. Yeah. Yes, I like it too, um, because it feels very hopeful. And it feels like, you know, and when I think of a third act of any kind of movie or book, it's just, that's when everything comes together and the leading lady or man, leading man, they get everything they want. They get what they want. They, they right? And it feels like this is the moment. So if you're looking for also, love, go ahead. It's also purposeful, you know, act. It's a third act. It's not yes. like you're finding yourself here and you're trying to figure it out. It's like you're actually putting something forward and you're excited and yeah. I like that. It's an action word. Action. That's part of my three, my three pronged approach, mindset, planning, action. I mean, you know, we've talked about it. Okay. So what are some of your questions? I know that you had one question about um, the idea of video introductions prior to meeting in person. So tell me about that because I actually have never done that. I never did that on my dating year. So, so let's talk about it. So what's your question about that? So, I mean, I think it's different now because of uh, COVID and Zooming and even professionally being on video a lot more. Um, well, the podcast, for example, as well, everybody's a little bit more comfortable with it. And um, instead of, you know, going maybe right to text or even a phone call, um, you know, when you're taking those this this level, you want to talk on the phone or this level, you're going to share your number and text. You know, what about the the video chat? And, you know, what's that like? I have not done that yet, um, but I do know that people are doing it. I'm, I kind of like the idea. I'm definitely going to try it. Um, I when I first started dating about 10 years ago, everyone was like, you've got to meet people right away. That's how you're going to tell. You know, you got to meet them in person. So, I mean, I didn't do very much before that, you know, like each other on the site and what the person said about themselves. And then it was like, meet. And I was doing a lot of that. And, you know, sometimes, you know, I thought, God, I really should have had a lot more almost preparation to, to, to that meet, because sometimes I don't think that is the best thing just to... why. Because I think there's other things you want to know if you're going to take the time and meet somebody. You know, I think you do want to see them. You want to see how their manner is. You want, at least I do. You know, and now that we are a little bit more comfortable with video, I think it just makes sense. I don't think you know. I, no, I don't want to postpone and have you know do video chatting for six months before I meet somebody. I think no. that would be, awesome. um, yeah. Oh, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I think if you're if you're drawn to do to do that and you feel like that's that's a good, you know, half step between you've got the match, you you've matched with with each other, you've sent a few text messages, maybe you've had a phone call and before you do the in person, then you have a little you set up a Zoom. You know, yeah. everybody and and you're right. I mean, everybody these days is so conversant with Zoom. I mean, that is just just ubiquitous. We all know how to use it. And so that's an easy thing to do. Um, what's the downside you think? Is there one? Uh, yeah, I don't know. I was trying to think, um, you know, only if the person is trying to not, you know, isn't going to have a lot of time if they're just fitting this in, um, and, you know, maybe not going to the physical meet because I do, I do think that's super important. So, I just was wondering if this one step prior to that would be a good practice. So I think that's, I think it's a a play it by ear, but, but here's one thing that here's my possible downside for you to consider that, you know, there is, there is a level of investment into meeting someone in person. 
you got to you got to get dressed, not just from the waist up. Right. And you've got to yeah. get in your car, you've got to or, or walk out your door and you've got to go somewhere. And when you're with each other in a physical location, you know, at a restaurant, at a bar, at a coffee shop, going for a walk, there's a little bit of a commitment of time. And so it kind of forces you each to make an effort. Yeah. Where where a Zoom can be over in a in a in a snap of a finger. A Zoom could be like, okay, well, I gotta go. You know, or something came up, I gotta go. It's much easier to bail. And so, you know, I I, I think that play it by ear, like I said. And if you really are getting a feeling of, I'm not sure about this person, I'm not sure I want to meet him in person, you know, if you really feel that kind of like you're hedging, then I would say, sure, go ahead and do it. But I but also, you know, don't make it a practice. Because it keeps you really safe. It keeps you safe inside your house. Yeah. You got to get out of your house to date. You know, I mean, part of this is about taking a risk. Part of this is about putting yourself out there and taking the time to do it. No, that's exactly why I was asking. Because I do I do feel like coming back to dating after having this break feels a little bit more daunting than it did originally. I think when I originally was dating, I was, you know, it was right after my divorce and I was like, you know, I'm going to go out there. I was just, I think a little bit more brave. And now I'm just a little bit more, you know, um, nervous about it. And also I, you know, it's, it's what we, what you talk about on the podcast, but, um, Yeah, maybe that is what I'm doing, you know, like setting up some boundaries and setting up some safety nets where, you know, there's there's only so much of that you can do. So that's yeah, good. boundaries are good, but barriers are not good. No, right. So boundaries, yes, barriers, no. Um, and I think that I th- and I do think case by case basis. So with all of this, here here's one of my my true beliefs about dating in the middle of life, dating after 50 is you have to take things case by case. You cannot approach it with rigidity. Like this is, these are my rules. This is how I do it. I don't vary. I, this is my approach and I'm never going to change it. You know, it's, you, you really do have to get out there and realize it's a dance. It's a bit of a dance. You're going to be pivoting. You're going to be changing your mind. New ideas are going to be sprung on you. And so keep an open mind and an open heart. So don't say I'm always going to do videos or I'm never going to do videos. It's case by case. And, yeah. and just tell yourself, hey, also, Jenny, I got to get out there, right? I, you know, to, to tell it to yourself in the mirror and if you need to in the morning and say, it's important to, to actually leave the house, get out there and meet people face to face. And I know that that can be daunting for sure. But then the more you do it, the less daunting it is. It's like anything else. Yeah, exactly. Don't you agree? Okay. So, and you also talked about, we we also have been talking about you and I about the various dating apps and mm-hmm. you were asking me about a lot of, and I know there's a ton. I mean, I talk about on this show, I've talked about, um, eHarmony and of course hinge, which is where David and I met and I've been on match.com. I've done okay. Cupid I've done Bumble. And then you had, um, even, uh, other ones that you had, you had some that I hadn't even heard of. And, um, and I think that, and, and, and your question was about like, what, which ones I thought were better. Yeah. And also uh, what you thought about how many to be on at a time. And I, you know, I was kind of going with two, uh, trying to choose two. And I have used eHarmony in the past and I really did like it because it had so many questions. And, um, you know, again, that was uh, a while ago. Um, but I did think that, you know, somebody who, who went on that had to be thoughtful about their profile, their, the way that they were expressing themselves, the interests that they had, it's a little deeper. Mm -hmm. Um, but then when I did a search in preparation for the podcast, I, I looked up, you know, top five, top 10, um, dating apps. And so that's that list from Forbes that, that I sent over. And so I was, so, so, so name those for people so so that people can hear the Um, names. I'd have to pull it up again, but it was uh, eHarmony was first. I think uh, there was a second one. Silver um, Singles. I have it in front of me. Silver Singles. Zoosk. Yeah. Z-O-O-S-K. Elite Singles. And Talkify. T-A-W-K-I-F-Y. So, so, so this is what I love about Jenny, you guys. Jenny is a... She's very thorough. And she's like a researcher at heart. And she's also... 
a recruitment professional. And so she knows how to get out there and do her little searches and figure things out. So she's she came up with this list. Now, and the question that you had was how many? So here's what I would say to that. First of all, just just as you responded so well to eHarmony because you liked that that very thorough detailed questionnaire, I had the opposite response. To me it was too many questions. So mm-hmm. I did it, but I was I was literally exhausted at the end of it. I felt like I had just been through this very rigorous questionnaire process. So if you if you are a person who likes to answer a lot of questions and if you want to be matched with people who also have had to answer those questions, right? It's it's a very thorough vetting process. If that strikes your fancy, then great, eHarmony is for you. And and I would say that's that's kind of the magic bullet here. What you want to do is look at all the different dating, dating apps because they are very different. Match.com is very different than OkCupid. Hinge is very different than um, probably than eHarmony. And mm-hmm. so we had there are a lot of differences. So take a look at all of them, and 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 think about a couple of things. Think about how much money you want to spend. Obviously, that you know what is your budget. Now, a lot of these are going to have various price levels, and so you know the lowest price level is is typically very affordable. So, how much do you want to spend, and how much time do you want to spend? you know, during, you know, per week on all of these, on getting all these matches from these various sources. But here is my caveat. Just like if you were searching for a job, you would not apply to one company and then sit back and think, well, I hope I get that job. Yeah. That's the only company I'm applying to. So let's hope, let's hope the stars align. So in the same way, don't use just one dating app. You know, people, people ask me this a lot. I get uh, women writing in and saying, you know, which dating app should I use? Like dating app one singular. I'm like many choose a half a dozen. And once you write your profile and once you choose your photographs, you can repurpose that content across all these different platforms. And, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. That is, that's the crux of this message. What do you think of that? Do you agree? Oh yeah, a hundred percent. But to manage it, and you know, I hadn't heard of some of these others too, like Zeus, I hadn't heard of before. Um, right. So I will be curious to go and do my uh, investigating. Uh, so I might change my mind, but I do think that's a good point. The fact that I did like that with eHarmony. I also liked Bumble um, and had used that, uh, and it was very different. Um, it was more of a, you know, short questions kind of to the right. point. Um, so yeah, I, I totally agree, like cast a wider net, but then when you're kind of managing all of it, um, and you just brought up this point that I also wanted to ask about what you thought, you know, kind of looking at something on a daily basis is not the, I don't think is a, is a way to stay in the game longer, right? Like it's too much of a dopamine hit or it lets you down or you get frustrated. And so I'm really going to try this time to, I don't know if once a week, but once every couple of days and if somebody replies or just kind of really um, make it a a little bit of a a habit, a practice to not look at that. Like the same, you know, with all of our social media, like too much of it is a little jaunting, uh, especially with this, right? So um, I don't know what your experience has been like that with some of the women you've coached. Well, and I'll tell you, for some people, it is very much like social media. They have to they have to really limit their screen screen time with this. For other people, this is the most fun thing they've done in a long time, and they just want to. They can't wait to, to get up in the morning, and the minute their eyes open, they they they're pouring themselves their morning coffee and looking at their matches. And so it really all depends. And again, there will be some times right? That you feel really excited by this. Maybe you've got some really cool matches on a couple of different platforms and you think, Ooh, this is exciting. This is fun. You know, is, did so-and-so message me or, you know, like, Ooh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get back into it. And then other times you're going to feel a different way. You're going to feel there's going to be an ebb and a flow Mm -hmm. and just go with that. And, and, but, but let it, let it be easy. And let it and let the times where you you're not that interested in it or it feels like a burden or it feels overwhelming, let yourself step away and but not completely throw in the towel. You know, that's a that's a really important point. And I think you're right. You want to be sustainable, you want to be in this for the long game. You want to sustain your effort and your interest in this. And so yeah. when you do need to step away for a few days or even a few weeks, that is completely okay. 
It's a long-term project. And you and I have both worked on long-term projects before. I mean, I think that we're both kind of project managers at heart in a way. And it's like sometimes you need to take a break and step away from the project because you need to just regenerate, right? You need to kind of get yourself get yourself going again after after you need a rest. And so I think the same thing is true with with dating for sure. Now you had another question about, and this is one of my favorite questions about uh, photographs. So let's talk about profiles, right? Profiles on all of these accounts. So mm-hmm. the written profile and also the photograph. So what what are your thoughts about the photographs that you want to use on your profiles? So I saw your profile um, when uh, you um, were were getting into it with when you had the other podcast, and I was like, "Oh my god, these are amazing! They're beautiful!" Um, and I even think you did something. I was trying to remember if you did something where it was kind of like you compared the ones that you had put up, and then you showed the ones that after the professional. So. Um, I I take photography. I, I'm not going to be able to do this myself, but you know, kind of having different outfits, being in different places. Like I don't, I wasn't that um, inventive or creative when I when I, I was just trying to find photographs that absolutely looked like me. You know, not trying to look different. Um, and then I used those, but. I do think there's something about kind of the professional finish, um, especially for, uh, you know, this is your profile and you, you should kind of ha- look your best or it should represent you. And I, I would imagine using a professional photographer um, will kind of get you there. But then again, I don't know, you know, if it's really necessary, it costs a lot of money, that kind of a thing. Well, I mean, listen, here's the truth. I, it's, for me, it was, it was a, a big game changer, those professional photo- uh, photographs. I am the kind of person who I I like, if you take a hundred photographs of me, I probably like two of them. Like it, I I am very persnickety when it comes to photographs. However, when I have worked with really great professional photographers, then that story is very different because they know what they're doing. And it's like the lighting and the way that you're posing or, you know, and and I put put air quotes around posing because you can have very natural poses. It can look like a very natural shot and the the best photographers make sure that it does. Um, Different outfits, different scenes, different scenery, right? So uh, when I was dating, when I was dating the the time that I met David, right before then, I I worked with the Smart Dating Academy, Bella Mm -hmm. Gandhi in Chicago. And so, and yes, you're right for one of, I think for one of her shows, she put up an old photograph of me, one of my previous dating selfies (laughs) and she compared it to one of the ones that I got after working with her. And it was really night and day. Um, And, and it's just putting your best foot forward, putting your most, your, your shiniest self out there is just, it's, it's never going to be a mistake because remember it is, uh, these dating uh, platforms are visual in nature. And so, uh, especially the ones where it's swipe left, swipe right. So you only have a couple of seconds to make an impression and a really great photograph will do that. And it's not like, when I say that, I do not mean a heavily filtered photograph or an AI generated photograph, none of that, you know, because you want to look like yourself because don't forget you yourself, you're the one who's going to be showing up on the dates. You can't look completely different than your photographs. You can't look, you know, 10 years older than your photograph. So all that stuff. So it's not about filtering at all. It's about capturing yourself in the, in the best light possible. I'm a big believer in professional photographs um, just because they worked for me. Definitely. And, you know, I, I do, I understand that there's a cost associated, of course, but you, you know, you'd be surprised you can work with some local photographers and say, Hey, you know, whatever your day rate might be, can I, can I get a half day rate? Um, can I get, you know, is it possible to get, you know, a half a dozen shots that I could use? You can negotiate. And m- most photographers that I know are self-employed and they're t- completely willing to negotiate with you, but it's, it's all in the spirit of, you're really wanting to put your best your best self out there because yeah you, sometimes you have just seconds to make an impression so why not and and it is an investment you know if you're going to yeah. do this you know i think um i didn't really look at it that way years ago i just kind of looked at it like just get out there and yet if you're really going to be um again more discerning more thoughtful kind of in it for, to try to um, ultimately find a partner or long-term partner, you know, it's an investment. So it's worth it. So yeah, good. I'm- 
I, I, think, I was like totally on the fence, but now I'm over the fence. I'm I think it's worth it. it. And you're not going to regret having great photographs of yourself. You can use no. them for a lot of things. Yeah. Right. I mean, you can use them for headshots for, you know, in, in business, if you're looking for a job or looking to switch careers, you can, I mean, there are, there's going to be a lot of uses for them. And it's, and it's also an ego boost. I have to tell you, it's a confidence booster to have great photographs of yourself where you really look your very, very best. You start yeah. feeling like, wow, yeah, let me, let me put these out there. You know, uh, what am I, what am I nervous about? Um, and, 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 you know, cause, because a lot of women in this, uh, this stage of life, this age, fifties, sixties, seventies, one of their concerns is that the men that they want to date are looking for younger women. Now, I personally do not believe that that is true. I, my, my husband and I are exactly the same age. And I don't think that that's true. You know, I don't think that you can make blanket statements like that. I think that that's a common, you know, belief, a cultural belief that men always want younger women, but I, I don't think that that's the case. And I think that that part of that is a story we tell ourselves because we're, we're, we're struggling with some self-confidence issues. And so photography is a beautiful art form and it can make you feel like a million bucks. So yeah. why not just stack the decks in your favor in, in that, in that regard and go ahead and yeah, make the investment. You're right. It is an investment. It's an investment in your time, in your effort, in your energy. And yes, there's going to be some financial investment too. Well, and I also think of, you know, would hope that men would, would take this, uh, you know, to heart as well. You know, how many um, swipes have you seen where, you oh. know, the are in the car or in the bathroom. It's like, do not have any friends that could take me. Listen, my very, my very own husband, his, he had, he had selfies from his car. And I, I mean, he did. And he had one selfie where it was positioned underneath his chin. So I was looking up at it. It was hilarious. And I, and I still laugh about it, but his line is always, it worked. Yeah. You right. know, because here we are. Right. So, I mean, <laughs> I, I don't I I overlooked it because I thought he was cute and funny and whatever. So it but it, oh, it, it it's not and and again, so so you know, guess what? It is our our professional uh photographs the deal breaker? No, they're not. I'm just saying that if you want to do it and if you have the money and if you have the time to do it, then it's a fun, it's a fun thing to do and it will help you because it will be putting your best shiniest self out there. So yeah. I totally agree with being middle of life uh, that, you know, as a woman, you know, that I think it is a, a good confidence boost, a self-esteem boost. And I think we do need it, you know. It so, is. It is. Think I, of it as self-care, Jenny. Absolutely. Think absolutely. of it as self-care. <laughs> okay. So Jenny, you were also talking to me about quadrants, which I thought were, this was such an interesting way of looking at how to evaluate at, at potential dates and potential matches of love. And, and so the quadrants that you mentioned, so you have, you have a niece who is in neuroscience and she was saying to you, and Jenny, you have got to look at people in terms of these quadrants when you're evaluating your dates. And the quadrants are essentials and then deal breakers, negotiables, and bonus. So yeah. that, that makes sense to me. Essentials, meaning these are the things that we, that you have to have. And then, but what, but what, so what's the difference between essentials and deal breakers? So essentials are the positives that you want and deal breakers are the negatives, the things that you do not yeah. want in your life. Right. I mean, a deal breaker for me would be somebody who smokes, you know, that's okay. just going to be something I'm into. Um, uh, or uh, as my niece, one of her deal breakers was somebody who is, if you're out to dinner and they're rude to the service person, you know, like right. speakers where, you know, it's just something that kind of, um, maybe it's a pet peeve, maybe it's a little stronger than that, or it's just something that you kind of don't want to deal with. Um, so, uh, the, these are the deal breakers, but the essentials, uh, you know, that's the one that I kind of focused on and, um, for me, the you know, an attraction uh, has always been around, you know, humor. Um, some of the essentials that I'm looking for now is an active lifestyle, particularly at this age. You know, are you open to new things? You know, I just joined this master swim class. I want somebody who also does these types of things, you know, that it, something that to, you know, to do together. Um, you know, are they curious? Uh, I also um, have a spiritual practice. I want, I don't, that doesn't need to be my spiritual practice, but are you also interested in these things? Right, you know, right. So, you know, um, I also, uh, 
you know, along those lines, I, I try to think with some of them, are they essentials or am I putting that in the bonus? But something that I wanted um, really to see if I start dating someone is kind of right away, are, am I inspiring this person to, uh, you know, think about me in terms of flowers or setting up a great date or, you know, coming up with ideas that makes it, you know, makes it fun because I know I do that, but, you know, that's not to say I have to have flowers. I have to have, you know, this, that, and the other, but are they inspired? And, you know, the beginnings of this relationship, that is something that's important to me. So um, I don't know if it's a bonus It might be an essential. And then I just played around with some of that, you know, the deal breakers, um, can, you know, be somebody who, you know, maybe, uh, you know, just doesn't really practice self-care or, you know, has some uh, pretty um, strained past relationships. Things, mm-hmm. things, you know, just kind of are a little bit of a red flag. Mm-hmm. Um, the negotiations. Yeah. 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 I mean, I mean, these are like the flags. These are like red, green and white flags is the way I talk about them. So the deal breakers are the red flags, things that you know that you don't want in your life you know, rudeness, impatience, quick to anger, um, really, really burdensome past relationships that, that really impact where he is today. So, you know, Mm -hmm. a lot of us have, have relationships in the past that did not work. That's why we're here in the middle of life trying to find love. Hello. But, you know, if you've done some of the internal work to get to move past it, then, you know, then, then you are open to, to falling in love again. But I really liked what you were saying about uh, the, but I think bonus is a really great category to have because I have red, which are the deal breakers, you know, the the no-goes. I've got the green flags, which is yay, full speed ahead. Love that. And then I've got white flags, which are pause and consider. And that would be, that would fall under the category of negotiables. Like, well, I don't think I like this, but I'm not sure. Or maybe this wouldn't work, but I, I don't know. Like things like long distance, you know, somebody was asking me recently about, um, dating. She lives in Los Angeles, dating a guy in Austin. And I said, well, you know what, but that can work. First of all, there's a really quick and easy flight. And, and, and secondly, it could be very romantic and very sexy. So, so don't, don't dismiss it out of hand. Don't, don't, don't cut yourself off at the knees. But I think that the interesting category that you mentioned under bonus, which is, you know, do I inspire this person to be romantic? And I think that that is important. You know, it's, it's the little things in a relationship, you know, that yes, flowers. I mean, who doesn't love that? And, and just also just who, who knows, who knows what other small gestures the person who falls for you will come up with. And it's Mm -hmm. all very endearing and it becomes part of your love story. So I think having a bonus category and being kind of open-minded about it, like, I don't know, surprise me. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, there's a, there's a phrase that I remember hearing, uh, you know, I mean, way back, in my early twenties, you know, it was always like, if the boy likes the girl, the boy likes the girl, you know, (laughs) it's, there's not a lot. You can see somebody who's got a girlfriend forever. And then all of a sudden they meet somebody and they're just, you know, they're doing all these things for this person that you didn't think that was part of their character, but you know, it's really, it's really a truth. You know, you really don't have, you really shouldn't have to question that. And particularly at this, uh, time of my life and, you know, being purposeful about it and not feeling like I have a lot of time to waste. You know, I, I, that is something that I'm looking for, you know, someone who's got that creative um, spirit, isn't, uh, you know, afraid to show how they feel. Um, Uh, Yeah, I totally agree with you. I mean, I love it when a man makes it completely clear that he likes you, you know, no guessing the guessing games, forget that. Are you kidding me? At this stage of life, who needs that anymore? It's just nothing but a waste of time and energy and it feels bad. You know, I mean, there's nothing romantic or sexy about it. I don't think. And, you know, to your point, if you're hearing that, you know, women are like, oh, you know, these men, they want younger women. Well, let them have them. I, you know, yes. like, <laughs> I don't, I mean, there's something, hey, you know what I mean? But like, I do not want to be with somebody who's thinking I need oh. the X, Y, and Z. It's like, Go for it. Like that, that is like a deal breaker to me. Like, uh, this, uh, yes, true. nothing you, you know? can, that's the truest thing in the world. If that's what you want, have it, have it. Bye. I, you know, it's not exactly. And it's not anything. It's like, you know, that's okay. But, you know, for me and for what I'm looking for, I'm actually more attracted to more mature men and more men who usually are a little bit older than I am. But 
it doesn't it doesn't matter. Like I'm like it's again not a deal breaker. It would still be a negotiable if somebody was a little bit younger. That's just not something I've done before. But yeah, that whole thing about you know men and you know it's not it's not coming out of nowhere. We do see that, but I just you know you know I think women should really ask themselves, well, why would you want to pursue somebody who who's right. really already got this type? You know, like, correct. Yeah. Correct. I mean, yes. And so, and so there are plenty of people out there who are going to love everything about you, including your age, including yeah. exactly where you are in life right now. And those are the people that you want to attract. You, that That's the kind of love you want to attract into your life. All right. Sure. So are you dating right now? That's the question. So are you going to go on some dates and coming up in the next couple of weeks? What's the plan? So I was so uh, as you mentioned, I'm turning 59 on Monday, and that was kind of my deadline. I was like, I'm going to get the profiles together, think about the pictures. So like, I'm right, you know, I'm right there. I'm ready. I'm really excited. You know, um, I had some, I had a difficult year last year, and it made me really reevaluate some things. And so for 2024. I said, you know, I I am going to give this all I've got this year. And I told you, your podcast is my favorite. When it drops, I'm probably the first person to hear it. Um, and I just love everything about it. And you really have inspired me, you know. And I think, yeah, you know what, though, you've got to put, again, the action in there. You've got to stop, you know, stop the research at one point. Stop, you know, just get out there. <laughs> yeah. You know, because I'd research all day long, you know, and come up for reasons why next week. But this was, yeah. So my birthday was really kind of like going to fire good. everything. And yeah. That's and so fun. good. Well, I'm glad, I'm glad this podcast has inspired you. That really is a very nice thing to say. And I'm glad because sometimes you do need that nudge. Yeah. Sometimes you need to get off the fence, right? And we, we all have been in that position, everybody, about a, 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 a lot of different things. And, but when it comes to finding love, I mean, and, and if you're in the middle of life and, and you know that you want it and it's a missing piece for you, then there is no time like right now. This mm -hmm. is the moment. Seize this moment because, you know, what, you know, why wait? Why wait? And I, and I'm very glad. I'm, I'm happy to know. Okay. So that you're out there. Okay. So here is what I want to know. Will you come back on the show and tell us about some dates? Say yes. I was thinking about that uh, on my way here. I was, <laughs> but I, I think it would be cool if, like, in six months, I talk about you know what's been happening. So no, not six months, Jenny. It's going to be way sooner than that. But okay, I'm going to take that well, as a yes. Okay, <laughs> yeah, I'm all about that. Um, yes, it's absolutely. Gonna be, it's going to be sooner because I want you to get out there, and it's going to be fun and interesting to just get your get your profiles up and 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 out there and start start getting some uh, feedback and, and making some matches and having some conversations and just having some fun with it. And I also think a good idea while you're also doing the, the, the online dating, just to let people in your life know that, yes, you're looking for love. This is what you want. Have you done that? Have you talked to people about yeah, it? I have. And you know, I remember reading uh, Katie Couric, was uh, getting very serious about dating. And she, can you imagine if she went online? That probably wasn't a thing that was going to work for her. But she did this very thing and she talked about it in her book. That's what it was. I was reading her autobiography. And she said, she told everybody that she knew. And then she actually kind of, you know, pest, you know, pestered them about, hey, I told you that I was dating. What about this guy? And that's how she ended up meeting her husband. And I thought, what a great, and she had some rocky relationships. You know, her husband had um, passed away, was sick. And then she had some times where, you know, she went through and didn't have the best relationships. Um, and so she really went through that time. It was kind of like in a 10 year span, I think, too. And she was mid 50s. And yeah, but she told everyone she knew. And I thought, well, that's what you got to do. Uh, I mean, I, I'm i meeting new people just through, uh, you know, some interests that I have. And so I haven't quite come up with my language around that, like people that I'm just meeting by, hey, by the way, you know, but hey, I, I'm I dating. I'm, I'm, hey, I'm looking for love. Oh, anybody. Yeah, I'm, looking, I, I'm looking for love. I'm dating. You know, here are some things I'm looking for. And, and that's the thing. When you do tell people, just like you make it clear in your profile, the kind the, your written profile, the kinds of things you're looking for, a committed monogamous relationship, for example, if that's what you're looking for, or, you know, a, a, whatever variety of things, someone who likes to travel, somebody who is really into um, spirituality and self-growth, 
kids, you know, mm-hmm. someone who loves to cook, you know, whatever it might be. When you do tell people in your life that you are excited to find a, a partner and you're looking for love, let them know what you're looking for too. I mean, first of all, it makes it seem really very real that you are actually asking them to keep you in mind in terms of potential mates and matches. And also it gives them something to go on because I think that a lot of people would love to be a matchmaker. I mean, I think that it would be, a, I would love it. I would love to be able to say, oh, to, you know, introduce my friends to each other and 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 have the the sparks fly and have them hit it off. I would love that. I think many people would, but a lot of people hold back because they're like, well, I don't know what she likes. I don't know what she's looking for. So let people know, let people know what it is you're looking for. Why not? What do you have to lose? Yeah, exactly. And I do think it's a little old school, but I think it should come back because I think people did used to set people up, you know, it was before all of this online and, you know, and I think there was something great about that, you know, like they would think of that person. Oh, I'm going to, you know, I think they'd be great. You know, they have to go out. And um, yeah, yeah, when we like that, that would be wonderful if that happened. I think, I think, I think it's good, and I think that it it would be great if it did come back. I mean, I think that when you are dating in the middle of life, dating at this stage of life, really casting a wide net, right? So mm-hmm. yes, do the dating apps, not just one. Pick a few and do mm-hmm. some dating apps. Yes, tell the people in your your life that you are actively looking and you want to find love, and here's what you're looking for. You know, so really, and 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 when you go out into the world carry that energy with you, that kind of happy to meet you kind of energy, right? Because you never know. I mean, I have a, I have a, a woman I was just talking to who met her husband in line at an airport. She was standing in, in line waiting for her flight and he was standing right in front of her and she struck up a conversation with him and they are married today. Yeah. See, I mean, definitely- so it, it's like, yes, those things happen too. It all, it's like, there's a lot of magic when it comes to uh, finding love. And I think that when you carry that energy with you of, I really am interested and excited and looking forward to being in love. When you carry that with you, you become a magnet. I I do believe that you become a magnet for it. And yeah, I, I think that idea of making it bigger, you know, what, you know, joining a biking group. Yes. You know, joining a painting class, doing those things, not just for your own entertainment or for your own interest, but because there's other people you make connections with and you just don't know where that goes. So it's like, make it bigger. If something isn't, if if for your interest doesn't end up, you know, learning to play golf and then you hate it or whatever, but you tried and you don't ever know who you're going to meet. And I think with the online, with the other parts of it, um, you know, it's, it's, it's about a lifestyle, you know, getting more active, having just more love and connection in general, you know, amen, sister. Yes. I am with you, Jenny. I, I, everything you just said, I agree with wholeheartedly. Well, what a fun chat this has been. Thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing. Uh, I love, I love your insights about the quadrants. I love your thoughts about, you know, the, the video, whether or not to do it. I, I I love that we that you that you brought to my attention even more dating apps. And there are probably just a zillion of them out there. And it's not about it's not about one being better than the other. I really do think it's about choosing the ones that work for you, that you like, that you respond to, that you're gonna have fun interacting with. That's the key to keep your energies and your spirits high. And then and not choosing just one but spreading it out a little bit. And then, and then I think that our conversation about, you know, making sure that you treat this with the same level of sensitivity as you treat any social media interaction. When you're feeling burnt out and overwhelmed, step away for a minute and, and just treat it like a long-term project and then you're going to be good. Well, all right. And I can't wait to have you back on the show, Jenny, and you're going to share some, some fun dating ex- escapades with us. It's going to be good. Thank you, Nancy. You know, I was nervous to do this and you were right. This was so much fun. Just like, I feel like I'm there in Bellingham with you and I wish I was, but this was great. So thanks so much for thinking of me. And it just gave me this, you know, little oomph, you know, and which I needed. So that's so great. Okay. Love you, Jenny. Love you too. Bye. Bye.